my check engine light's on. I want it fixed. I'm the customer. I already changed both O2s and the engine computer. Guys, by the way, this never had O2 problems until the engine computer was replaced. Okay? So this is a faulty new engine computer. And it's not new. It was remanufactured. This was built into the car. Why did they change the computer in the first place? From what I gather, for the stalling problem. What did they do? They built in what? A problem. As soon as they changed it. New computer. Now we have O2 codes. What did they do next? New well, let's change the O2. We have a code for the heater. Let's change the O2. The issue with this car, as you can see behind me, we have an O2 heater fault. Uh, history of this vehicle is kind of crazy. The owner states that the vehicle stalled on him. And it, in fact, I found out yesterday that they've had this stalling problem pretty much since they've owned the truck. They complained that not only did it stall, but it also wouldn't restart for a period of time. And it was setting a crank sensor fault. Okay? I, I may not have the history of this exactly how it went, but this is from my memory. So I um, asked the owner, uh, oh, he said that he continued to have a stalling problem after the crank sensor was replaced. And when I first asked him, he told me that the vehicle still wouldn't start at times after the crank sensor was replaced, and that's when they replaced the engine computer on the car. And since the engine computer was replaced, they've had oxygen sensor fault codes. So um, oxygen sensor fault codes, uh, you can see that it has a new O2 in it. You see what it's all twisted up to, which I didn't like. And then it also had a new O2 put in on this side. So both rear O2s were replaced. And look what they did on this one. And you see, you see that they had to weld in a new piece of pipe and a, a, like an O2 uh, bung, is that what you call those? Yeah. It's a bung hole. <laughs> it's a bung hole. <laughs> bung? That's B-U-N-G. What's that? You said B-U-N-G, bro. Bung? Yeah. Bung? No, bong. Not, no, no, not bong. It's not a bong. Oh, right. I saw I was, I no, was, it's <laughs> not a bong, <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> it's not a bong. It, it actually is a bung, you know? Like, it's not a yeah, like, you know, I don't know. I'm thinking of um, Beavis and Butthead. You bung hole. Bung. B U N G. It is a bung. A bung. Huh? It's a weird word. <laughs> there is a bung hole right there. But the, the point is, what did they do after replacing the computer on this truck? What What did the um, shop do? They replaced both downstream O2s. And when they replaced the one, obviously the pipe was messed up and destroyed. Thank you, Pennsylvania rust. And uh, they had to replace that section of pipe. Somebody's working hard here, wouldn't you say? Uh, not a bad weld, by the way, whoever did this. Uh, the weld up top was a little bit sketchy on that, on that bung, but... Uh, yeah, they couldn't get up there. And, uh, yeah, pro I don't, it looks like they might have done this on the ground. So they may have had the exhaust on the ground. I don't know. But that's the history of this vehicle, is it, is it had a, um, a couple of O2s put in it. Oh, there's the top weld. There's the better shot of the bung. Okay. Uh, and then it continues to set this fault code. Uh, the code, again, was the bank one sensor two, which is this side. This is driver's side. Bank one sensor two. Cylinder one. Cylinder number one would be uh, driver's side on this Chrysler. So that means that that's bank one. And then S2's behind the cat. So I have a heater code for this sensor, brand new sensor. And they uh, were not able to fix it. At that point in time, they, I guess the owner took the car from them and, and that's how I got connected with her. Old friend from high school and I saw her post on Facebook and I was like, hey, I can, we can look at it here for you. And that's how we got involved. So when I called them, they told me again, it's continuing to stall and not restart. But then after test driving the vehicle, we find that we can't duplicate the fault 
can't duplicate. It did stall a couple times when we turned the wheel. Dirty throttle body type stuff. Idle loads. But we couldn't duplicate the no start condition. Let me ask you guys a question. You should have made this wonderful. Will a dirty throttle body cause a stalling problem? Yes or no? Yes. Will a dirty throttle body cause a stalling problem accompanied with a period of time where the vehicle won't restart? No, never. Never. Okay? So, dirty throttle body may be stalling problem, right? No, no restart, not the case. So I get back on the phone, talk to the guy, and I find out, I, I, I question him again. I said, please, you have to tell me this. Since the crank sensor was replaced, does the vehicle stall and not restart? I stressed it again to him. I said, has it ever not restarted since the crank sensor was replaced? His answer to me was different this time. He said no. That it was a issue where it stalls, but it always restarts now. That's our issue with this truck, and it has an O2 code. Okay? Now you guys are up to speed as far as symptoms, what we did, where we're going. I suspect a dirty throttle body. Let's do that part first before we watch this video and those O2 um, heaters. Um, this was my uh, after result. Now we have, we got to come back to that. Come back to this. I have my dirty throttle body in here. Okay, good. This is a pulse width modulated idle air control valve. This is not a stepper valve, even though this is a Chrysler. Uh, by the way, this is a 2006. I believe, or 2005, 2005 or 2006 Dodge truck with a 4.7, I believe, is the engine. It's a two-wire IAC valve. You can see IAC pulse width modulation PWM percentage. I'm at 52%. Engine's idling. My RPM is 645, and my desired is 666. So that's these two guys. I like those. Um, I threw the TPS in there just because this is not a drive-by-wire system. It has a cable, so we're clear. Right? There are no idle control devices on drive-by-wire systems. So um, no accessory loads. Pay attention to these numbers. The pulse width, 52, the current, and the IAC airflow. Pretty much circled everything on the page. I didn't need to do that. All right, that's no accessory loads before cleaning. This is full accessory loads, meaning the car is in gear, the high beams are on, the blower motor's on high, the air conditioning's on, the rear window defoggers are on, I mentioned headlights, high beams, okay? All of my accessory loads. My current for my um, device only went up a little bit. What was my last one? 635, so I'm at 661, and my pulse width only went up about 2%. But there's a real issue here now, and it's this. And I noticed that uh, my RPM did get a little bit rough at this moment in time. Talk to me about what we're seeing here. My AC is as far open as it's able to go, and it's not able to. That's exactly correct, Nate. The IAC is as far as the computer is going to give me for my idle controls. How do we know that? all of my accessory loads being on, my desire didn't change, it's still 664. My RPM dropped, and this number, and I, I let this go for a little bit, this was about 590 to 600 in the range you're seeing, and um, I waited to see if the computer would open the IAC up more, and it would not. Okay, questions on that. Is there, does the computer have the ability to open the IAC up more? Yes. But why won't it? What did we learn in idle control systems in this class? The computer will limit how much idle load compensation is allowed. What's the rest of the valve usage for? It's cold, fast idle speed, decel fuel prevent, uh, decel stall prevention. That's what the rest of the IAC positions are for. So we, we've reached our limit. What is this suggesting? Is it possible this is his stalling problem? What happens when I come to a rapid stop at times or cut the wheel and add a power steering load to this as you're parking the car? That's when this stalls. That's when he described this vehicle stalling is when he comes to stops, when he's making turns, 
foot is off the gas pedal. Is that a pretty important question to ask a customer when you're trying to duplicate faults? Mm -hmm. Like when? When is important? So it all matches this. Dirty throttle body is my suspicion. Let's take a look at it. Let's look at the pictures. We'll look at the after numbers. So this is the front face of it. Uh, this looks actually pretty clean uh, down in this area, but uh, it got a shadow here. But from this point over, I'm drawing over top of the black part. Like it's really hev heavily carboned in that area. So it looks to me like maybe someone tried to clean this recently. Uh, that's the, the one side. And then I got the top side of the throttle body. You can see it again, real heavy carbon in this area. And same thing down in here. So did somebody attempt to clean this? Like in this area in here, you can see it's kind of clean. Uh, I think the answer is yes. Somebody was in here. They didn't clean it good enough. And all of this stuff behind the closed throttle plate in here does not matter at all. That's before. Um, and then here's after. So you get an idea. Like the, the area that we care about is, is within here. Okay? The black stuff that's behind the plate, don't care about that at all. Everybody happy with the result of that? Almost looks like a smiley face. And then the top side. So some of you might be looking in here. Why do I not care about that area? It's behind the throttle plate. Your intake manifold is going to look like that. The entire manifold is going to look like that. It's not a problem. Where does it need to be clean? It needs to be clean in here. Everybody like, like the way that looks now? So I was actually surprised it wasn't, it wasn't more dirty, but let's look at the after numbers now. After numbers, after cleaning this, what do we notice? Is my desired idle the same? No. It's not close, it's exact. What's my desired idle before? 664, through all these. Is my desired idle the same? Yeah. Yes. Actual RPM, again, these are, this is going to move a little bit, but is it matching? Yes, this is no accessory loads after cleaning, none. What do we notice about that guy? IAC pulse width, I'm down to 25%. 25%, my current milliamps and airflow, right? Those are calculated numbers. They're also lower. Here's with all the accessories on. What's the, the biggest number that stands out to us with all the accessories on? These two. That's the biggest thing you want to take away from this so far. All the accessories are on. Is the computer able to properly control the idle speed now? Let me ask you this too. Do we have more? We're at 43%. Do we have more available to us for power steering loads and quick coming to stop um, conditions? Can the computer move the valve more? Yeah. So will this help prevent decel stalling conditions? Foot off the gas pedal stalling conditions, what do you guys think? I think so. Uh, the last thing we're going to do before we release this truck to the customer is test drive and make sure we're good. Okay? Everybody comfortable with these numbers? Is there any questions, there should be questions, on the milliamp number and what we're looking at here? Look where we were before. Let's, let's do the uh, full accessory loads. We're at 9.9% GS. What's that? Grams per second. This is a calculated airflow number. That's how much airflow is moving through the IAC valve itself. The current would be based on the pulse width. The higher the pulse width, the higher the current. We're going to see the same thing, guys, with the O2 heater because it's pulse width modulated. Okay? Uh, and by the way, these questions that I'm giving to you, I am not as we have in the past because I'm grading this. I'm not going to read the questions to you and answer them. You need to pay attention to me as I'm talking. Okay? And I just said, this is a pulse width modulated O2 heater circuit coming up. Uh, 661 amperage, everybody comfortable with that? The longer the on time percentage, the higher the amperage. So look at when we're done, we're at 43% and 531. Less current flow for the same conditions 
Um, just wanted to point that out. Okay? All right. So we'll see on our test drive whether or not this fixed our stalling, decel stalling condition. Um, I'm, I'm uh, pretty comfortable with it. Now we're on to this. My check engine light's on. I want it fixed. I'm the customer. I already changed both O2s and the engine computer. Guys, by the way, this never had O2 problems until the engine computer was replaced. Okay? So this is a faulty new engine computer. And it's not new. It was remanufactured. This was built into the car. Why did they change the computer in the first place? From what I gather, for the stalling problem. What did they do? They built in what? A problem. As soon as they changed it. New computer. Now we have O2 codes. What did they do next? New computer. O2. Well, let's change the O2. We have a code for the heater. Let's change the O2. Both O2s, welded exhaust, broken bungs, bunghole. <laughs> Proud. Anthony smiled. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, one, one, two heater circuit fault. I have a circuit high code. Okay. All right. Let's play this video. Let's watch some of it. See what happens. 